Hello, my amazing learners. Welcome, welcome, welcome back. I am Stacy and Murray, and today we're going to be talking about sentence structure types. Sentence structure types are four in number, and I'll help you to understand them clearly. Amazing learners. So the sentence structure types that we'll be looking at today are the simple sentence structure type, the compound sentence structure type, the complex sentence structure type, and the compound complex sentence structure type. Now, everyone knows that the basic elements of every sentence is the subject and the predicate. And when we say the subject and the predicate, we are talking about the elements of a sentence. A simple sentence has one subject and one predicate. For example, Mary went to the market. Now let me illustrate it for you with an actual demonstration. Now, amazing learners, here we have it. The simple sentence demonstrated. So as I said before, our sentence is Mary went to the market. Now, let me break it down for you. Mary is the noun. Went is the verb. And to the market is the prepositional phrase. You may say to yourself, what if I don't have a Mary, a John, or a Tom, but I have he or she or I. Is that okay? Yes. You can use pronouns and it will still be a simple sentence. So here we see where the simple subject is Mary and the complete predicate, which is went to the market. So Mary went to the market is a simple sentence. And when broken down, you can see the different parts to it. So Mary is a simple subject, went to the market is a complete predicate. But when you're breaking them even further, you can identify the parts. I remember I said that subject and a predicate makes up your sentence. And here we see that subject Mary and predicate went to the market would combine together. Also, something to note about simple sentences. With simple sentences, you can have compound subject. What do I mean? So whereas we only had Mary being the subject of the sentence, you can have sentences that say, Tom and Mary went to the market. So that's a compound subject having more than one subject within the same sentence. Also with simple sentences, you can have compound predicate. What do I mean? So the sentence could be Mary and Tom went to the market and the supermarket. So that's a compound predicate. So you are compi combining two subject matters together and you're combining two predicate matters together to make a sentence. And of course, with simple sentence with compound subjects, you always see the introduction of an in between the two subjects. So Mary and Tom, Tom and Mary. A compound sentence has more than one part that can stand alone. And of course, everyone, this part that can stand alone is known as an independent clause or any part of the sentence that can stand on its own is known as the independent clauses. Now, your independent clauses are connected by your coordinating conjunctions or your conjunctive adverb or a semicolon. So what this is basically saying is that a compound sentence will have different parts to it. And these different parts can be combined by a conjunctive adverb or a coordinating conjunction or a semicolon in order for the sentence to make sense. But with this sentence, we have to be careful. So take, for example, the second sentence type is 
the compound sentence. And our sentence this time is, we went to San Juan and most of us danced all night. Now, as you can see, the sentence has a little bit more than the simple sentence. So here we have two subjects, which are we and most of us. We have two verbs, went and danced. We have a modifying phrase, which is all night, and a prepositional phrase, which is to San Yuan. We have two predicates, which are went to San Yuan and danced all night. So here you're seeing a lot happening in this sentence. But overall, it's allowing you to get a clear picture that not only did they go somewhere, but they did something as a group. So that is what a compound sentence is, containing a lot of information about a particular matter. With a compound sentence, these are some of the coordinating conjunctions that you can use in your sentences. For, nor, and, but, or, yet, and so. And is a more familiar one for us. And so we see here that and can be used to join two separate clauses, clauses together to make it one sentence. For example, Tom swims, Mary plays tennis. Joining them together with the use of and, Tom swims and Mary plays tennis. Now we see two independent clauses by the use of and becoming one sentence express, expressing one idea and making sense. Another thing that we use in the compound sentences are conjunctive adverbs. But before we go into the conjunctive adverbs, let, re, let me remind you of something. When you use the coordinating conjunction and Please remember that a comma goes before the and in the compound sentences. And then when it comes to the conjunctive adverb, which are moreover, however, otherwise, and therefore, you have to remember that the comma comes after the conjunctive adverb. For example, in this sentence, Bob is handsome, moreover, he is rich. In this sentence, we see Bob is handsome after that clause you will see a semicolon and then the conjunctive adverb, moreover, comma, he is rich. When you put them together, you get a complete sentence, a complete thought. Bob is handsome, moreover, he is rich. So always okay, so as we were saying with compound sentences, uh, conjunctive adverbs are used and conjunctive adverbs are known as floating adverbs. Why? Because they can be positioned anywhere in the sentence, at the beginning, in the middle, or at the end. So, for example, Bob is handsome, semicolon, moreover, comma, he is rich. We see moreover being at the beginning here. Second, Bob is handsome, semicolon, he is, comma, moreover, comma, rich. This is in the middle. And the last sentence, Bob is handsome, semicolon, he is rich, comma, moreover. We see the moreover coming at the end. Now, regardless of where the moreover is placed, we realize that the sentence remains the same, meaning it maintains its meaning. Bob is handsome and he is rich. Okay, so the third thing, my amazing learners, to note about the compound sentence that you can use a semicolon. I did say before that you can use a coordinating conjunction and you can use a conjunctive adverb. And now I want to show you how you can use the semicolon in this sentence. Now, according to Little Brown Handbook, ninth edition, it says that if the relation between the ideas expressed in the main clauses is very close and obvious. Without a conjunction, you can separate the clauses with a semicolon. Example we, we are using is that Tom has benefited from his exercise program, semicolon. He is slim and energetic. We can see the relationship. Relationship here is because of an exercise program, Tom is now. There's no need to add an uh, adverb or a coordinating conjunction in its stead. A simple semicolon will do, and the meaning remains the same, and you get the point of the sentence. Amazing learners, the third sentence structure type is the complex sentence 
A complex sentence has at least two parts, one that can stand alone and another that cannot. The part that cannot stand alone is linked to the rest of the sentence by a subordinating conjunction. For example, we decided to have fun in the park even though we went to San Juan yesterday. So we see we decided to have fun and we went to San Juan yesterday joined by even though. Amazing learners, like the compound sentence, the complex sentence also uses subordinating conjunctions. And some of the subordinating conjunctions that you can use are after, although, uh, as, because, before, how, if, once, since, than, that, though, till, until, when, where, whether, and while. By using these, allow your sentences to fit. Amazing learners, the final sentence structure type is a compound complex sentence. Now, this type of sentence has more than one part that can stand alone and at least one that cannot. For this type of sentence, conjunctions link the different parts of the sentence together. A simple acronym to help you to remember some of the conjunctions would be fanboys, which stands for for and nor but or yet and so. Amazing learners, the last sentence type is compound complex sentence. And an example of this is, since we wanted to have fun, my mother and I went to San Juan yesterday and we danced all night. So this is a compound complex sentence. This is a subordinating conjunction because it can't stand alone. And the parts that can stand alone are, my mother and I went to San Juan and we danced all night. These two can stand by themselves because they carry their own meaning. Amazing learners, now in closing, we looked at four sentence structure types, which were the simple, compound, complex, and compound complex sentence structures. Now to use all these structures sometimes can be a bit of a challenge, especially when it comes to the complex sentence structures and the compound complex sentence structures. I would recommend that until you have mastered all the sentence structure types, that you, for ease of use, use a simple and a compound sentence structures. Once you have mastered these two, then you can always expand your writing by using the others. Thank you.